Hello, this is Andrea Fields with Hazelnut Growers of Oregon, and I've been given the opportunity to present a little bit of information about the Oregon hazelnut crop and a little bit about our company. So thank you, and we'll get started. A little bit about the hazelnut world production. Um, as you can see from this slide, uh, Turkey continues to dominate um, with the last five-year average being at 69%, followed by Italy, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and then the U.S. following at 3% of the global supply. The world hazelnut production in 2020 totaled almost 510,000 metric tons, with the 2021 crop estimate coming in at just under 563,000 metric tons. This is an increase of approximately 10%. World production has increased approximately 64% in the past 10 years, and Turkey remains the leader in global production, and the EU continues to dominate the global consumption. A little bit about worldwide hazelnut demand. Uh, this information was shared at the INC uh, conference back in May, and this shows by country um, the imports as far as uh, metric tons for the last 10 years from 2008 to 2018 and some of that growth. As you can see, there has been year over year growth with regard to demand for hazelnuts in the world. A little bit about the Oregon hazelnut crop um, for the last uh, 20 years. You can see with this slide, the kind of how the crops have been dispositioned over the years with a lot of focus um, in in-shell in prior years. And then as we are in the last you know, couple of years from 18, 19, and 20, definitely a lot more focus on um, kernel and probably more value add than the in-shell market. And for Oregon hazelnut acreage over the last 20 years, um, definitely has seen an increase. Um, again, the slide was shared at the INC conference uh, back in May. And you can see how that acreage has been growing and we expect it to continue to grow over the next five to 10 years. So with the Oregon uh, 2021 hazelnut crop, uh, with the images you see here, these are uh, from the Jefferson variety. And as you can see, the trees are loaded with a lot of nuts. Uh, 2020 was a record crop for Oregon at 62,700 tons. And then currently there's about 85,000 acres planted with an anticipation that this will increase to 90 to 95,000 um, short tons of product by 2025. There's approximately 1,000 growers that traditionally have been made up of smaller family farms. However, with the increase in plantings, uh, we're now seeing larger private growers and entry of corporate companies and investment firms in the Oregon Willamette Valley. The 2021 crop estimate came in at a conservative number of 54,500. Um, this is at metric tons on an in-shell basis. Um, with regard to Oregon, we've had several significant weather events that occurred in 2021, and the impact on the crop is not yet known. In February, we had a significant ice event, and April came in as our driest on record, which is abnormal, as usually this is during our spring season, which is usually quite rainy. Average rainfall is about two and a half to three and a half inches, and we received just a little over a tenth of an inch. And then this was followed in June by just a record-breaking heat wave that we have never seen, and frankly, we're just not used to. Um, so a little bit about the February ice storm. These are some images of the hazelnut trees. As you can see, some of the breakage, um, the young trees and the old trees alike um, did see some breakage. And this was pretty isolated to um, certain areas in the valley. Not all of the orchards were impacted because north of um, northwest of Portland, it was more snow versus ice. So it had a, a there was just certain areas that got hit with the ice. Not all of the orchards were impacted. And then we had the June heat wave. So we had about three to four days of record heat uh, where the trees were showing leaf and nutlet burn. And you can see from the pictures here some examples of that. Some of the orchards that are irrigated may have been less impacted. Um, as mentioned, the exposed nutlets are showing signs of sunburn, but the leaf burn is sporadic and inconsistent. Some trees are significantly burned and others not so much. And the overall effect on the crop is yet to be determined. Uh, it's just not yet known how this heat that happened in late June is gonna impact either this year's crop 
on potentially next year's crop. We just won't know that until the fall harvest and the product starts coming in. A little bit about HGO and kind of where we're headed. Um, we traditionally isolate the Barcelona and Ennis varieties for in-shell export sales. And our Jefferson and High Shell Out varieties, we target for shelling for our value add and our retail consumer packaged goods. We're really making a focus about making an entrance into the retail marketplace. We're able to offer natural or roasted whole kernel, dice sliced and whole and broken hazelnut products, butter and paste. And with our Oregon Orchard brand for retail, we have seasoned uh, chocolate confection and baking, and those come in various sizes. And those are currently been in the marketplace now for almost two years, and we have a dedicated sales team working on this line. We pulled some information from Mintel, uh, which is a research uh, company, and looked at just specifically in the China market and where hazelnut products are coming from. So these are some of the categories of the new hazelnut product introductions over the last three years uh, with regard to the categories of chocolate confection, bakery, snacks, sugar and gum confection, desserts and ice cream, sweet spreads, dairy and breakfast cereals. So as you can see, chocolate confection is kind of the, the takeaway. Um, there's a lot of new um, product introductions. There was a total of 139 introductions over the last three years in, ch in the China market with hazelnuts in them. Some of the top companies that are producing uh, hazelnut products um, and doing these launches of these 139 products is Mars, Ferrero, Nestle, Mondelez. So you can see from the chart here just showing the number of um, new varieties that came out in the marketplace over this three year period and the timing. Some of the new brands that came out um, in China in the China market were the Grassland Hazelnut Milk Ice Cream, the White Chocolate Coated Wafers, Chocolate and Hazelnut Mandarin Flavored Ice Cream, and the Hazelnut and Chocolate Flavored Rice Balls. And these are some images of some of the new products that you may or may not have seen um, in the Chinese market um, that have hazelnuts and are shown here. So I just thought I'd share a little bit of that interesting information uh, just to kind of look at where where the markets are landing. Um, some of the top product claims uh, in in the for China with the Chinese consumer is they focus on social media, seasonal, ethical. Um, they're looking for kosher and halal. Um, but on the opposite end of the sp spectrum is organic, um, looking at low fat and free from claims which is kind of a real, uh, very opposite from the U.S. market because the U.S. consumer is more focused on organic, natural, low fat, low sugar, you know, gluten free. So it's kind of interesting to see the switch in the um, in what consumers are wanting in China versus in the U.S. That concludes my presentation today. Uh, really hope that you enjoyed this and kind of gave you some insight on a little bit about the hazelnut crop coming in um, this fall from Oregon and a little bit about the market. Thank you for the opportunity and look forward to um, meeting you next year.